We got something special for you today, which is an advanced screenings review of the upcoming HBO miniseries, I Know This Much Is True. This is based on the novel by Wally Lamb, and the series itself is written and directed by Derek C. in France, who did Blue Valentine and Place Beyond the Pines. I saw the first two episodes of this. All, all told, it's seven episodes long, but the screener was the first two episodes, and it's premiering on Sunday, May 10th at 9 p.m. is when the first episode of this is going to air. This stars Mark Ruffalo as twins Dominic and Thomas Bridzi, who were both born into, like, a sort of tabloid celebrity scenario, because they were New Year's Eve babies, born six minutes apart, and in the middle of those six minutes was midnight. So technically one baby is born, technically one baby is born one year and the other the next. This was, I believe, uh, years before the tabloids were writing about uh, Bat Boy and, uh, and Sasquatch and, and, th and, and things like that. A majority of this is taking place in 1990 when both characters are 40 years old and you have the character of Dominic who is divorced certainly gone through family tragedies in the past and then there's Thomas who is in and out of the hospital because he's a paranoid schizophrenic it opens with a very brutal thing that happens that Thomas does to himself and it winds him in a maximum security insane asylum. We see a lot of things in flashback, like what the brothers had to go through in their in their youth, uh, how his mental illness increased over time, why Thomas has, not Thomas, Dominic has grown up with these severe anger issues in dealing with his brother for 40 years and also an abusive stepfather. And he's spending a lot of time trying to get his brother out of this hospital and moved to one that he was in previously. So you're seeing this guy who's very angry at this mistake that he thinks happened. His brother has ended up at the wrong place. This is going to be like a maximum security prison. And having to be told how and why his brother would end up at a place like this. Mark Ruffalo is fantastic in this. The special effects are great. They... The writing and the acting is so well in these characters that it it doesn't feel like you're watching the same actor just doing two parts. It feels like two different characters, two wildly different performances in uh, just right down to like their height even their weight, their speech manner, and, and things like that. It is It is completely believable that these are two different guys, and these are two wildly different performances. The camera work with uh, how they do the effects is great. There's when he's being taken to this maximum security asylum, and there's a big, long shot with the camera where it's 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 moving all over the place we're following this scuffle here his brother being dragged over here uh dominic yelling at staff thomas wetting himself and there's very little cuts in this sequence and it looks perfect it looks real that these are that they are that Mark Ruffalo is just in two places while all of this is going on. There was only one time, one time where I really noticed something. And that was there's a fight in the second episode. And when this happens, you can see the profile of Thomas's face that it, it looks like makeup and, and, and prosthetics on on another actor. That was the only thing that was the only time. I ever noticed anything like that. But what what I do really love about this is that while Ruffalo's great, these two characters are great. They are written 
flaws and all, especially Dominic, because it's not just some simple story of like, oh, here's the here's the normal guy, here's his brother who's in the hospital. No, not not at all, because you see the very clear rage issues that that Dominic has in the movie, but it's a real ensemble too. They surround our main characters with not just a great supporting cast, but a lot of whom uh, are really playing against against type in this. I really like uh, Rob Hubel is Dominic's buddy in the movie, who's this car salesman and struggling actor. And there's a there's a there is a really fun sequence where he's excited that he's on this seafood commercial that's airing on TV and he's talking to Mark Ruffalo on the phone and he's wanting feedback as if he's just given this Broadway performance in this like <laughs> what looks like a local red lobster type type chain or or something like that. Rosie O'Donnell is in this as the social worker at the Maximum Security Hospital. She's great. Like, she, her scene where she is really breaking down that this place might not be this hell on earth that Dominic thinks it might be, and why, one, he needs to calm down, and two, really think about what your brother did to himself and trace the steps of how he realistically ended up at this place. It's a great scene with her and Ruffalo just playing off of each other. She's fantastic. And she has a few funny lines in it that are funny. So yeah, definitely. And, and delivered and delivered incredibly well, but not, but it's not like her character is throwing out a joke or something like that, or, or a one-liner, or anything. It's just a humorous line that is realistic and authentic to this pretty tense situation that's going on between these two characters. Catherine Hahn has a very subtle and, and tragic and quiet performance as his ex-wife. And one of my favorites in this, in the first episode, Juliette Lewis plays this linguist who's hired by Dominic to translate a manuscript written in Italian that he found from his grandfather. And the catalyst that kind of set all of this off with Thomas has to do with their mother being sick. And Dominic wants to have this manuscript translated so he can give it to their mom as, as a gift. And Juliet Lewis steals her scenes in this. She's fantastic. She's this eccentric language expert that's talking about how she's translating this book, but keeping in some words in Italian so it can flow like music and like poetry. But then she breaks it down to him that this manuscript she's <laughs> that she's translating is apparently just awful. And like she's she'll she straight up says, um if you're giving this to somebody as a gift, you may not want to do that. And she has a scene stealing scene where it's her and Ruffalo together. They're having pizza and she can just throw out a line about being annoyed that the kind of pizza she got was different than what they ordered. And let's just say that like, there's some drinks that are involved and, uh, <laughs> um, this, there's drinks that are involved, and this night gets very heavy and very crazy relatively fast. It's it's a great scene. It was one of my favorite scenes in the two parts. I hope that as the episodes go on, we see more of Juliet Lewis and Rosie O'Donnell and Rob Hubel and all of these really good supporting characters, incredibly well cast. I really enjoy also how bleak the series looks. I mean, it, it's a it's a show that not just deals with the schizophrenia on the part of the brother, but also the depression in terms of Dominic's character, Catherine Hahn's character. There's a lot of scenes outside that are either pitch black or overcast or raining. I, I like, I like that 
touch to it. It it, it really may it, it goes well along the mood with a lot of what these characters are talking about in here. I even like little subtle details in it too. How Dominic is a uh, he's a house painter for a living, and they do that. They add like little like dried up paint like under his fingernails. There's nice there's nice little touches like that in this series. I completely recommend this. I mean, alone just for like I would recommend it enough for the writing, the directing, Ruffalo's dual performance in it. That right there would be enough to really highly recommend it. And it is, but when you factor that in with the much larger scope of these two characters' lives and the really good casting that it does on the supporting cast and how really three-dimensional they make a lot of these supporting characters, even in just the two episodes I saw, some of them having only been in like one or two scenes that I saw, and it's so well-written and well-acted that you instantly get a feel of these characters. This comes out again on Sunday, May 10th at 9 p.m. It's worth it's worth checking out. It's 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 one that I'll it's one that I'll continue watching. So as far as my rating goes, I give I know this much is true a full twins. <laughs> okay. Shoot us a subscription over at youtube.com slash Stone Gremlin Productions. Also click on the notification bell as well. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash the cinema snob. Thanks a bunch for watching, guys.